I'd like to go over some basic form and technique for MMA cardio kick. We have a few different punches that we use in our program. The first is a jab. For all of our moves, we're going to have a stance either with our left, which is southpaw, or our right foot forward. Okay, so this is traditional stance. Your feet are going to be kind of slightly at an angle, but your torso is going to be twisted to the front. Nice and comfortable. Agile on your feet. Your feet aren't really that far apart. Our stance is right here. Our guard is going to be up no matter whether we have an open hand for a Muay Thai type movement or a closed fist. So your fist, when you take your hands, you're going to close them, put your thumbs over top of your middle fingers. Then we're going to rest our hands comfortably like so, okay? We don't want the wrist to be bent. Um, when we punch, our wrist is going to be nice and strong. Now, where do our hands go? Whether we have a punch or Muay Thai guard, our elbows are going to stay in to protect our rib cage during our movements. Our hands are going to be up by our face. Usually when I'm boxing, I have my hands up actually physically touching my cheekbones. It kind of reminds me where I need to be. Okay, so and that is helpful because if your hands are away from you and your opponent actually tries to hit you, you're going to hit yourself in the face. So we want to keep them up nice and close and protected. So if you get hit, you're not actually going to punch yourself. We wouldn't want that to happen. We also burn more calories when our hands are up in a high guard versus way down here because we're doing more work. You can feel more muscles engaged in this process. So we have that stance slightly to the side, whether we're southpaw or traditional, and we'll be doing moves on both sides for this workout. Our first move from our boxer stance is a jab. Jab, our opponent is in front of us, and again, for the purpose of this workout program, our target, or our pretend imaginary foe, is going to be someone that is about our height. So you're aiming directly in front of you. We're going to jab, we're bopping them, we're trying to hit them right in the nose, breaking their nose into their face. Punch to the front. Now you notice I exhaled as I extended and I added some rotation in the torso. This is where your power comes from, not actually from your arms. The exhale is important because that was going to give you your uh, core contraction and it's going to help engage the core throughout the entire workout. So keep your core nice and tight like you're getting ready for someone to punch you there. Exhale, you're contracting the core. Returning back to that neutral position as soon as you finish your punch. Now when you punch, we don't want to lock out the elbow. Leave a slight bend as we throw the punch. Same thing on the other side. Punch and return. Again, you're aiming right for here. Okay? We want to break the nose. Our next move is a cross. It's a move from your back arm. Whether your arm is here, cross the body. So our back arm is the one that's the leg is in the back. Cross. The pivot is on that same leg for the power. Switch. Other side. Across the body. We can also do a cross to the side. Sometimes you'll see us do this. We'll do a bob. Cross the body this way. And in that case, our cross, as we move, we're going to go into a lunge type position. Our next punch in MMA cardio kick is a hook. Now a hook, we're aiming for that cheekbone and the side of the face right in here. So when we aim for that cheekbone or even the side of the jaw, that would be another target point right here where the jaw connects right under the ear 
It'll really hurt if you hit there as well. You are going to take the arm. The person is very close to you. Take the arm 90 degrees, punch through. You're gonna picture yourself hitting them on the cheekbone, finishing the punch, okay? So the follow through goes past your body, 90 degree on the arm. If I turn my arm to the side, it's down and over, okay? So for, to give you an idea of how close this person is, in our hook, right there, very close. We don't wanna reach the arm out, no. Keep it in nice and close. The person is right there, money shot, okay? Let's do that on both sides. Hook. Other side. Southpaw stance. Great job. Now, our next punch is the uppercut. The uppercut, we're aiming for the bottom of the chin. We're gonna drive up and hopefully have that person hit their jaw and fall backwards. When we do this particular punch, we want to actually aim for their chest. So if they move, we hit the, the chin, but that's our ultimate target is the chin. So our southpaw stance, we're all set up here, foot forward. As we do our uppercut, our hands are close. Scoot down, drive up. Notice how I got in that squat, drive up. The person, again, is really close. We're not reaching out here. Our arm is really bent. We're using our bicep to engage. Punch and return. Punch, return. Uppercut, switch. Other side. Again, driving through that leg, driving up close, hitting the person through the chin. So we have to go a little bit higher than the chin for the follow through. We're really getting lots of movement and power for this move from our quads and our glutes. Part of MMA is kicking. And adding kicks into the workout can really add a lot of fun to the workout. We wanna make sure that when we're doing kicking that we have ample space around you so that you're not gonna kick your workout partner or injure yourself on a piece of furniture in your living room. So always make sure you have a clear space. My legs are really long so I need a good amount of space all the way around me when I'm moving to prevent injury. Kicking is also going to really work on our balance. So keep that in mind. We don't need to be super high in our kicks for them to be effective. A low kick is just as effective at throwing someone off balance. We're still going to engage our core. We want to stay balanced ourselves. So we're either going to kick to the front, the side, or the rear. Generally, we're going to have our hands up, but sometimes we move our guard to the side as a block for the kick, whether it's to the uh, side or the back. Our first kick is a front kick. So when we kick, we're gonna retract the leg, flex the foot, push like you're pushing down a door. Push. Now again, we don't wanna lock out the knee. We wanna push using our, our hip flexor here, pressing forward and down, taking up that space between us and our opponent. We're not going to kick and then return back to our spot. We want to kick, don't give them any space. Using, for this particular kick, the ball and heel of the foot to really get the power. If your foot is loosey-goosey, you would actually sprain your ankle when you kick your opponent. So flex, foot, kick, push. So when we do these, typically we're gonna kick and then maybe we'll do another one 
and then we'll shuffle back to allow you some space. Kicking to the side. Again, we're also going to engage our core. Side push kick. Load the leg. Again, balancing on that one foot. Retract. Push out, push in, down. Push out, push in, down. Balance, push. Flexing the foot. You want to hit the person with a hard part of your foot for the side kick. Again, balance is really critical. We want to know what we're aiming for. If I kick up here, I'm aiming for the rib cage. Ha! Rib cage. I can aim lower. I can aim for their ankle. I can aim for their knee. This is a great place to aim. It challenges your balance. And if you're actually in a fighting situation, you can take someone out of a fight right away with this. Okay, flex the foot. Hitting across the knee. So that will knock the person out right there to the floor. All right, so you need to be able to do this on both sides. Again, your guard is up. Load, let's do ankle, flex the foot in, out. You can use your blocking arm here. You can tap down if you need that for balance. Let's aim for the knee. Let's aim for the rib cage. Load it, press. A little bit slower. In, out, down. There we go. Out, in, down. In, out, in, down. Using your core to engage your balance, driving that leg forward flex for power. Same kicking concept to the back. But for the back, our target is primarily going to be hitting with the heel. So with our back kick, I'm going to start from the side so you can see. We're going to drive that leg up, back, in, down. Flexing the foot. Looking behind you so you know what your target is. Real world, you need to see your target. In the purpose of a workout, you need to make sure you're not kicking your neighbor. Okay, now from the front view, it's gonna look like this. Both sides, let's try the other side. Up, out, in, down. Up, out, in, down. Again, exhale, flexing the foot, driving that heel back. It's like you're saying, get off me. The roundhouse kick can be a challenging kick because we're pivoting our leg around. Different than the other kicks that we've already demonstrated, this particular kick, you're kicking with the front laces of your shoe, so your foot is gonna be pointed to the front to really hit that front as you bring the leg around. So to help wind you up for In cardio kick, we also use some MMA inspired movements. For those movements, we'll have an open hand. So our hand is open, relaxed at our face. Here, we still don't wanna have our fingers, our thumbs loose, so we can rest them on top of the other hands right here. Most of the Muay Thai movements that we use are going to be use of the elbow instead of the hand for striking. So the first is going to be a cross elbow to the front. So we're going to take our hand and I like to use my other hand as a pusher to kind of help support guide. Okay. So hand up. Let's try that on the other side. Nice 90 degree angle here. You're using the elbow, that pointy part to do the striking. Here, typically, we're aiming for the cheekbone across the face. All right, the next move is going to be an up elbow. So this, if you have limited 
shoulder mobility, this might be a challenging move for you and yours might look a little bit different and that's okay because we're not actually fighting anyone here. We're just using fighting for our cardio activity. So we're gonna bring the arm back, almost like you were slicking back your hair, but don't open your palm. Leave your palm like this, back. So you're hitting them, you're aiming for the chin, right here with the elbow. Usually we're gonna step forward with that movement, bringing the arm up. So tricep stretch flexibility is really important. If this is tight, I would recommend that you make sure you do stretches like this, movement here and after you get out of the shower you could take your towel and pull on the towel gently to help stretch that out you can also use a resistance band to work on that mobility as well right here so again boy tari guard up elbow Let's try that on the other side. Just like punches, we want to return that hand back to the guard to protect our face as soon as possible. Close to the body, pointy bits. So we have side elbow, up elbow, side elbow, up elbow.